So let's read this. Several students were weighed and measured. Their data is given below. So here's their height up at the top. By the way, I didn't have a lot of room on here. The height on the top here is in inches, okay? And then on the bottom, the units are pounds, okay? So for example, this first data point, this person 48 inches is pretty short. They weigh 90 pounds. That'd be somebody in elementary school. Uh, then we jump up to 54 inches, 100 pounds, 60 inches tall. They weigh 110 pounds. So we're trying to see if there's a correlation between height and weight. And we know there is, right? I mean, not, not everybody that's tall is going to be way more, right? They might be really skinny. But on average, the taller you are, the more you're going to weigh. So that's what this question is dealing with. So what we're going to do is take these data points put them on a graph, see what the curve or the line of best fit is, and then answer some questions about it. So let's go with the first point, 4890. So make sure it's big enough here. I'll just, uh, I'll just say this is 50 inches. Whoops, that's too big. I'll label it later. Okay, 4890. Actually, I need to label it right now. This is not nice. So somebody tell me what the first point was. 48.90. 48 so we're going to go, yeah, let's use a different, let's use a blue point. So close to 50 and then about right there, right? 48.90. Okay, what's the next point? 5400. 5400. So about right there. Okay, next point. 6110. 6110. So about right there, next point. 65119. 65119, thank you. Uh, 71131. Okay. Now I know this one looks curved. I was trying to go for a straight line though. I could see it going either way. For the sake of just doing a line problem, I'm going to make the curve of best fit a line. So, linear. Okay, so we'll make a line of best fit this time, even though it does kind of look exponential. But it is almost a line because it's not too curved, so it could go either way. So we'll just make it a, a line of best fit. All right, now let's just answer some questions about this. The first one's very similar to what you'll see on the worksheet. What does the slope of the line represent, the slope of this particular line? Does anybody want to answer that? By the way, what is the definition of slope? Rise over run. Rise over run. Okay. We can draw, we could calculate the slope of this line by, by picking a point on the line. We'll guess about, what, 50 comma 100, and then go up and over to the next point, which looks like 60 comma 110. So it looks like it has a slope of 1, more or less, right? But what does that slope mean in terms of this problem? I'll give you a hint. The x-axis is in inches. The y-axis is pounds. The change. Yeah, so every, every inch that you grow, you gain a pound. OK? That's what the slope means, just based on these students' data. There's, of course, a lot more people in the world, so I don't know that that's true. But that's what we're going to put for this number one, part A. For every inch you these students grow, they gain about a pound. Anyway, that's what the slope represents. For any problem, basically, um, you're going to look at your x-axis first, your change in x. So in this case, change in 1 inch, or change in 10 inches, represents a change of 10 pounds. So you just, you basically take, um, your, you, you, you compare your change in x to your change in y. Okay? And for this, in this particular case, it's 10 over 10. So every, for every 10 units, for every 10 inches, you gain 10 pounds. If you simplify, that's one. Ooh. Next question. According to the line of best fit, how much would a student be expected to weigh if they were 62 inches tall? 62. Well, we need to just go to our graph, look at the line, and look at x equals 62, and see what the corresponding weight would be. 
So here's 62 right here. Let's go up. It looks like it's below about, it's below 120. 119. Looks like about 118. 118. 118. Listen, so all you got to do is go to the x-axis. See, grab, uh, go to the x-axis at 62. Go up and see what that y value would be on the line of best fit. Looks like about 118. Oh, that's the third question. Let's go to the second one. Okay, I'm going to type it. Okay, any questions on that? So you just find the x, and then you see what the corresponding y value is on your line of best fit. The next question is the reverse. We're going to go from pounds back to inches. Around how tall would a student be that weighed 140 pounds? So now we're going to look on the y-axis and see where on the line we get 140, and then go down to see what the corresponding height would be. I think this one might jump off the graph, so we'll have to do our best. See if we can extend this line some. We can just take this away for now. So let's make this line bigger or longer. Wait, how much? It was 140. Okay, so here's 140, right? If we were to go down and extend that, it looks like 80, right? 80 inches tall, which is really tall. So for this question, you have to go to the y-axis, see where that point is, and then go down and see what the x value is. And like I said, that'd be about 80. Maybe it's, I got 75. Okay, Maybe well you 80. can, a little bit more than 80? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll just say 80 just for simplicity's sake. So 80, okay. listen up. Shh. Be about 80 inches, which is about 6 feet, 8 inches, really tall. So I guess it's just a certain group of kids. It's not the norm. Okay, we're just uh, using a line of best fit to project what someone might be. It's probably not going to be quite that steep, right? Um, or no, actually it would be steeper, wouldn't it? You'd be way more. So for this particular student, I guess they're a little lean. So that's all that is for slope. I'll just say one more thing about slope and let you guys go. Remember, just when you're answering part A of any of these on the worksheet, you're first going to look at the x-axis and see what that change in your line is. So in this case, it's for every inch. It could be for every minute or for whatever your x-axis is, for every whatever. And then your second part of your question will be your change in y. And that's it. Let's say you found the slope to be 3.5. Then it would still be for every one unit change in x. Say for every one minute, there would be a 3.5 change in y, whether that be thousands of dollars in your account or whatever. That is a lot of money.